How's it going guys? Mr. Chris here talking about welding, which is what we're doing this week. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about, so we're, we're focusing here on aluminum welding. Let's get a shot of this beautiful Franken boat here. This is my project I'm working on. Uh, not the prettiest boat, but uh, hopefully, hopefully she'll be functional. I'm learning a lot and uh, going to share with you what I've, what I've learned as I've been going. Uh, some basics here, this is what's called a MIG welder. MIG stands for metal inert gas. And the way the MIG welder works, or the way all welding works, is you have uh, electrical current that flows uh, through your gun. In this case, this is what's called a spool gun. We'll talk about what that is in just one second. And it throws, flows, electricity flows through this wire that goes through here into whatever metal you're, you're welding, which you're melting together. And then it goes through your ground wire, which is this guy, and you clamp it onto whatever you're welding, and then back to the machine. So it's just making a really simple circuit, and, um, and you have a little gap between your wire uh, and where you're welding, and that's where the electricity jumps. So the electricity can jump from this wire over to the piece you're welding, and it's just like a little mini lightning bolt, uh, exactly like that, and it generates a ton of heat and that heat melts your metal and allows it to, to fuse together. So the goal is to get your two metal pieces to fuse together. And then the spool gun is really cool. Um, inside of it, let me take this off real quick. This is my friend's MIG setup. It's pretty, pretty nice. He let me borrow it. Inside of it, you have a, a spool of wire. And as you weld, that spool uh, gets pushed out through here through your tip and it just melts away so it's melting into the material and adding new material so you're you're melting your two pieces of metal that you want to weld together and at the same time you're adding new material into it and uh, that's what gives you a nice MIG weld. Uh, the advantage to MIG welding is it's it's um, pretty fast so you literally are just pulling this this lever right here Hold your gun how you want it, and then psh, weld in. There's a lot more to it than that, um, but that's kind of the general idea. It's it's fast, it's easy to get around, um, and a lot of times it's not going to make necessarily as well. A, a really good welder can make really beautiful welds with a MIG welder. I, uh, a novice, a beginner, uh, am not so talented with it, but I'm learning. Um, and then the other type of welding. Oh, and the, so MIG stands for metal inert gas. The inert gas, if you guys have taken chemistry, in this case is argon. So this is pure argon. And that gas gets pumped out all around where you're welding. So it comes out this tip. And uh, when I pull the trigger over on this other welder, you'll hear it. Uh, but gas uh, basically pushes away all of the air. So there's no oxygen, no air where you're welding. And if there is, that'll contaminate the weld and make it terrible really fast. Uh, so we have that argon, that inert gas, pushes all that other uh, air out of the way, and that's what allows us to have a nice clean weld. So welding aluminum is all about keeping the material really clean, and I'll show you really quick how we do that. Uh, this uh, mini setup is, is my little welder, and this is a TIG welder. Um, TIG stands for tungsten inert gas, and so instead of... Uh, material like that wire coming out on the MIG welder, we have a little piece of tungsten. And you can see it, it's, it's kind of green colored right now. It shouldn't be that color, it's probably going a little too hot last weld, but um, that piece of tungsten um, allows us to do something really cool uh, that you can't do MIG welding. It allows us to change the amount of electricity uh, that's flowing through our, our welding circuit as we're welding. So this is really helpful, especially with aluminum welding because aluminum gets really hot really fast. So right when you start welding, you want to get really hot, so you want those two, the two pieces of metal to start melting. But once it gets hot, it can get too hot really fast. And uh, with MIG welding, your only thing you can do is move your gun faster and faster and faster so that you're not getting too hot. With TIG welding, uh, you have a foot pedal. So check out this foot pedal here. So while, while you're um, welding, you have this pedal, and depending on how hard you push down on the pedal is how much electricity is flowing through. So you might start down all the way to get a good weld going and then back off 
as you're going further and further because your metal is holding a lot of heat in. So this is this is pretty cool. It allows you to have a lot more adjustment on the fly, which is, which is really nice. Um, this is also a lot cleaner. It's not loud. There's no sparks going on. Um, and typically, TIG welding will get a lot prettier weld. Um, let's see. We're missing one really important part of the TIG process. Let's get that out of here. So on your TIG, TIG welder, you don't have wire flowing through your spool gun like on the big welder. Instead, you have pieces of rod. So these are just uh, rods of, of pure aluminum. It's important to try to keep this stuff really clean. And uh, I'll show you guys a weld here. And let's figure out, show you how this works. But basically, um, TIG, TIG welding is kind of like a one-man band. You guys ever seen a one-man band where the guys playing the drums and the guitar and the saxophone at the same time? Uh, TIG welding is kind of like that. You're doing, you run the pedal with your foot, you got the torch with your right hand, and you're feeding um, rod with your left hand. And this is a little, little uh, skill that welders have is feeding the rod really nice and consistently. It's something I'm not great at, but I'm learning as I go. So, let's see if we can make a weld. So, uh, we fire up the welder. There's a million settings on this welder. I'm not going to go into it because you guys will probably get bored, but you can change a lot of different things. Um, and you got to always make sure your gas is on. If you don't have that argon flowing through, you're going to have a terrible weld right off the bat. No, no chance to make a good weld. Um, let's see if we can film this. Toss that helmet on. Got my good friend Ryan filming for us. So as you guys can see, I'm, I'm uh, welding basically a big, giant, ugly Franken box onto this boat because uh, I want to have a nice little cabin to stay warm in when I go deer hunting and fishing and stuff. And you can come up on this side of the way. I'll weld right over here. Um, so you guys will probably, hopefully you can hear this sound. That's gas flowing through there. So you always want to make sure you have gas flowing. Uh, really important you never ever weld without um, a welding mask on welding is really bright you also don't want to have any exposed skin because uh, it's like kind of like getting a sunburn really fast so you try to cover up your skin um, and then the important uh, really important feature right before you weld you want to make sure your material is really really clean so you take a, a stainless steel brush and you just really really get after whatever you're about to weld. You want to do this right before you weld so that you know it's nice and clean. If I was being a little more thorough, I would take an acetone wipe and wipe this down, uh, but I'm not right now. Uh, just, just so the video speeds up a little bit. Um, the, torch, the, the number one rule that I have really learned, come to learn as I've been doing this project is ABC. And that means always be comfortable. If you are in an awkward position welding and you're super uncomfortable, you're gonna have a really terrible weld. Um, so you wanna, before you start the weld, you wanna figure out how you're gonna do the weld. I wear this really cool little setup, it's called a TIG finger. Uh, it just allows me to, it, it shields the heat because I, you'll notice I'm touching this metal that I'm about to melt. So it gets really, really hot really fast. So I wear this guy because it kind of gives me a place I can, I can touch the metal and it doesn't get hot quite as fast, uh, which is really helpful. And then I want to figure out a way I can uh, figure out where I'm going to feed my rod from. So the rod, as I'm, I'm going to get a molten pool of aluminum going, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but um, maybe I'll try to get another shot through the welding helmet you guys can see. Um, but I'll get a, a molten pool of, of metal, and then right when it's molten, I'm just going to tap it. Uh, with this with this rod and it's going to melt into it and I'm going to work my way up through the weld. So I'm going to try to weld from here up to here. You always want to do short stretches of weld. If you try to go for a big long three foot long weld, you're going to put way too much heat in the material. 
and it's going to warp and do crazy things. Uh, so it's short little stitches and then you kind of go through and, and you spread your work around. So I might get this piece hot, then I'll go over and weld somewhere else, uh, then weld somewhere else, and then I'll come back here and it'll have cooled down enough for me to weld again. So let's go ahead and fire this up and see if we can't make it work. So again, you want to always be as comfortable as you can. I'm going to get myself a nice little spot here. And I'm going to fire this up. You ready, guys? Ready. too shabby really. Maybe I should talk to you guys more often while I'm welding. So it's nice shiny weld. I got it nice and clean. A lot nicer than other welds around it. Um, and it's because I took my time and I and I you try to find kind of a rhythm. So you're, you're moving just a little bit, tap, moving a little bit, tap, moving a little bit, tap. So it's kind of this little rhythm and at the same time you're feeding this this rod as you go. So the keys are being really comfortable. ABC always be comfortable. Uh, clean, clean, clean. You want to clean the aluminum as good as you can. A stainless steel brush is what you're looking for to clean it. Um, and then um, take your time and find your rhythm. Uh, it takes a lot of practice. I'm Sometimes I have a nice weld like that. Sometimes I have a terrible crap weld like that. So it's, um, it's a learning process. Unfortunately, part of my learning is going to be on the outside of my boat. And you guys can make fun of me if you see me around town with this ugly thing. But, um, but it's a great way to learn and uh, it's a lot of fun. So you can, if you can get good at this, you can get all kinds of work in town. There's a lot of, a lot of people that uh, need, need aluminum welders. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, ask me any questions that you can think of. And um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of fun. It takes, it takes a lot of hours. I got a lot of time into this thing, but it's better than watching TV. So we'll see you guys later. Peace.